Goddamn, cholos are awesome. I, I've been dying to make this video. We're gonna talk about the wheels. We're gonna talk about why I think 18s are better in the rear than 16s for a cholo. We're gonna talk about the tires. And most of all, we're just gonna talk cholo. All right, so let's start off with the wheels and who makes them. They're made by DNA. They're the Mammoth 52 Fat Spoke. I custom ordered them to my spec, which was 18 by three and a half in the rear and 21 by three and a half in the front. I had the rims and the hubs powder coated black, and then the spokes were chrome with a texture. Now they offer, I believe, four different textures. My last pair of DNAs, I had the same texture and I loved it. I love the way that the light sparkles off them called the diamond texture. Finally got the wheels on. So today is the day I've been waiting for since May 7th. Did the iron butt the very next day. I've only had them on for like nine days so far as of right now. So, but I've got a lot of miles on these already. I mean, a thousand miles just on the iron butt alone, and then another couple hundred just shooting this video. So I've learned why I like them better than the 16s. It's pretty obvious, a, a bigger wheel and tire will roll over bumps and holes easier than a smaller one. A smaller one will get trapped in the hole, you know, and, and put it on your suspension, which, the, you know, it puts, it puts it on your butt and your back. So just natively, these roll smoother. Now there are some downfalls to having a bigger circumference wheel and tire. Uh, for one, it will affect your acceleration and it could, depending on how big, affect your speedometer. In my case with the speedometer, it actually, it actually corrected my speedometer. So your rear wheel and tire are part of your final drive ratio. So if you have a bigger circumference, you're actually making your drive ratio taller. So when I was at 80 doing 3000 RPM, now I would be at like 2900 RPM. It's not much, but it's, it's kind of nice to have, I gotta be honest. But it will hurt your acceleration a little bit. It's so small that it's really not noticeable. Another great thing I love about having the 18s is that naturally it will tuck into your fender more. So let's say you're at stock ride height. You got this bike, he's got a 16, you got this bike, he's got an 18. Both are stock ride height with suspension, it's not touched. With the 16, all of your white wall will be exposed. With the 18, the white wall will start to tuck into the fender at the very top. So that's just, that's just at stock ride height. Then you put on suspension and you lower it and you get a dumped look where it really goes into your fender. And I mean, that's, that's Cholo right there. As far as performance or usability, drivability, the front is exactly the same dimensions, the same weight, the same everything, same size tire. So there's nothing really to say about that. So, and speaking of tires, I'm using the Avon Cobras. The rear, I had obviously I had to get a new rear tire because of different wheel size. The front, I actually swapped the tire from the old wheels to this because the tire is in such great condition. So this is an Avon Cobra. This is an Avon Cobra Chrome. One thing that's obvious right off the bat is the fact that the white wall is thinner on the 18. It's, it's not as wide. Um, I don't really mind that because it's still, it's still very obvious that it's a white wall. Um, I did really enjoy the rear 16 with a huge white wall, but 
this I honestly I'm, I'm so happy and how it looks uh, just overall that I really could care less that the white wall is just a little bit thinner and if anything it actually starts to match the front because people would point out on your 16 be like wow your white wall is so wide in the rear but in the front you have it's really thin because it's a 21 it's just not much sidewall now it seems to match up a little bit more so the bike looks a little bit more uniform and so these are things like little things that add up as to why I'm really falling in love with the 18 in the rear and why you should strongly consider doing it if you are strongly considering getting wheels for your bike. Um, at the time that I ordered them, they were doing this promotional sale or whatnot, uh, so they gave free rotors with the wheels. I was gonna do rotors anyway, but I was like, if it's free, I'll take it, absolutely. And uh, they actually were giving away the exact style that I wanted to get anyway, so performance-wise, I can't say that there's any difference in braking, I, not at all. In looks, absolutely. I thought the stock Harley rotors were just the ugliest things ever made. Just the finish and the, the design of it, I couldn't wait to get rid of them. I can't believe I, I lasted this long with them. And now when I see a bike with stock rotors, I'm like, yeah. So if you guys are doing wheels, it would behoove you to get rotors at the same time, even if they're not giving them away. I'm pretty sure you can get like these exact ones on eBay for like 110 bucks. As far as the fit and finish, you know, the, the paint is flawless. Um, the, the, just everything is, is flawless. I mean, granted, they're brand new, but you know, it's their DNA is a great brand. It's an American company. They're based out in California. And there's really not much else to say. I mean, you could buy a pair of ride rights, which will also look incredible. Uh, but you'll spend about twice as much. If you have a $2,000 budget for wheels, DNA, I definitely recommend them. This is my second pair, haven't had a single problem. My last set of DNAs, um, I didn't check the tire pressure for like two years. And when I finally checked it, I was down about like one pound. So it clearly doesn't leak whatsoever. All right, so let's talk about ride height. Shut the lights off, bitch, I don't wanna see a thing. Soles are all about being low, right? The fronts are lowered two inch with the progressive mono tubes. Then the rear is lowered also two inch with the progressive 422s. The, the fronts are, have always been great, but the rears can be a little finicky when you start dropping it further than an inch. So anything dropping it less than an inch, uh, you get a nice, you know, fairly smooth ride, you know, with these things, nothing smooth, but compared to, you know, a full two inch drop, it's pretty smooth if it's, if you dropped it less than an inch, but you're not getting the looks and I'm all about the looks. I want the looks. I'll just deal with the pain. I generally keep it about one and a half to two inches dropped. Um, and now I, this is two inch. I've, I've had it here for about a week. I mean, it's, it's really hard and it gets bouncy at two inches, uh, but whatever, I, I like the way it looks. All right, so we're talking about ride height. It's very important that you're able to turn, okay? For a long time with the 16s, um, I, I could barely turn. You know, I'd go on a ride with some buddies that have, you know, some Dinas. They got crazy lean angles on Dinas. You just in fourth holding a pin? Uh, well, I'm, see, that's the thing. I met the limitations of my turning. Yeah, I could... I, it's got like 25 degrees on the left, 24 degrees on the right. I mean, with the 16s, it was like 10 degrees at constantly scraping. When you go two inches higher with a rear wheel, Theoretically, it'll raise your pipes up one inch. So that one inch did wonders as far as being able to turn. It's like a whole new bike. 
Now, I mean, yeah, I still scrape, but it's not, it's not nearly what it was. I was just sick and tired of scraping. Forget going two up. That's it, you just have to go in a straight line. You know, of course my brother with the, the Dyna, he thought it was cool uh, scraping. He's like, oh, don't worry, that's, you get street credit for that. And, uh, <laughs> but if I scraped like in an, a city somewhere, going around a turn, like people would look like, like you don't get street credit. People just think like you're crashing or like there's something broken <laughs> that's dragging on your bike. Uh, it, it doesn't, it's not cool. It's, it's not, um, nope. This stuff combined with a magic eraser on your white walls is the best, you know, there's no harsh chemicals. So I use that and it makes them almost new every time. Some people are worried that they're gonna rub their white walls off. Just so you know, the white wall on a white wall tire is white rubber it's not paint y'all ain't gonna rub it off anyway guys it's pretty much all i got um keep up the enthusiasm i love it you guys are awesome and we'll see you soon